Good morning to everybody. Okay, this is my conflict of interest statement, and uh, we can start. So, third generation cytogenetics analysis in this 10 minutes talk, I will uh, tell you how nanopore sequencing can become a game changer in uh, cytogenetics analysis. Uh, so, in the identification of numerical and structural uh, chromosomal alterations, uh, uh, in particular in the identification of copy number variants, uh, CMVs. CMVs, copy number variants, are uh, uh, defined as uh, DNA segments uh, that can be found in a different number of copies in different genomes, in particular duplications and deletions. The range between a uh, uh, few or tens of kilobase pairs to large chromosomal aneuploidies and uh, CMVs are key contributors of many of several genetic uh, syndromes and disorders. And so their identification is of fundamental importance for, for both prenatal and postnatal, uh, and postnatal diagnosis. At present, uh, we have uh, three main tools uh, to make cytogenetics analysis, conventional karyotyping and molecular karyotyping based on uh, uh, microarray or NGS, so sequencing by synthesis, short reads. And uh, the resolution limit of conventional karyotyping is in the order of 5, 10 megabase pairs, so preventing the identification of uh, micro duplications and micro deletions. Uh, molecular karyotyping with CGH array, microarray, and NGS have a resolution limit in the order of 50 or hundreds of kilobase pairs, and uh, with NGS uh, around 10, 20 kilobase pairs. However, all these three approaches have uh, very time-consuming and uh, complex experimental protocols that delay time to diagnosis by 3 to 15 days. They have lower satellite in handling uh, either few or many samples and uh, clearly high per, samples, uh, high per sample analysis costs. One uh, of the most powerful approach for uh, detecting copy number variants is uh, the recount approach uh, that uh, is, uh, has been widely used with uh, NGS data and uh, it is based on a very simple uh, idea that the sequencing process is a uniform process for which uh, each region of the genome is sequenced randomly and independently and so deleted region will uh, have less reads than a region that is not deleted and duplicated region will have more reads than a region that is not duplicating. So counting the number of reads in consecutive and non-overlapping regions of the genome can be very useful because it can predict the copy number state of each region and clearly increasing the number of sequence reads allow us to reduce the window size so increasing the resolution in the identification of copy number variants and in the detection of their boundaries. And uh, this approach, as I said before, can, has been widely used with sequencing by synthesis data with NGS. <coughs> However, due to the parallel nature of NGS approaches, uh, sequencing data can be used only at the end of the sequencing run. And uh, clearly, to maximize the throughput and minimize costs, the flow cell of the sequencing by synthesis, so the Lumina platforms, must be fully loaded at the beginning of the experiments. Clearly, thanks to the natu sequential nature of nanopore sequencing, uh, reads can be used just after a few minutes from the beginning of the run. And three years uh, ago, in a paper published in the uh, Journal of Molecular Diagnostics, we demonstrated that the risk generated during nanopore sequencing can be exploited to make a recount approach. So 
so to identify copy number variants and uh, just uh, with the risk generating the first uh, few hours uh, we could use uh, uh, window size in the order of uh, one to megabase pairs and with the risk generated uh, after 24 hours of the sequencing run we could use 50 key uh, 50 uh, kilobase pairs of uh, window size so increasing the resolution and uh, we apply this to a um, very small data set made of seven patients with uh, CMVs of different sizes, with pathogenic CMVs of different sizes, from uh, large aneuploidies uh, to micro duplications and micro deletions uh, to very small uh, of, mm, CMVs of hundreds of kilobase pairs. And we demonstrated that with the sequencing data generated in the first hour, we was capable to uh, <coughs> identify large aneuploidies with the data generated after uh, um, six to nine hours. So we were capable to identify micro duplications and micro deletions. And uh, with the data generated uh, with, um, after 24 hours, so we were capable to identify uh, smaller uh, CMVs uh, of hundreds of kilobase pairs. And moreover, we could also able to uh, predict uh, the level of mosaicism. Clearly, these results were based on uh, um, R9.4 chemistry with mini ion flow cells. Today, we have the R10.4 chemistry with prometheum flow cells uh, that uh, duplicated the, the, the uh, throughput of uh, mini ion flow cells, so a larger number of reads. Uh, and uh, so we can uh, make uh, several things uh, different with respect to our previous work. Uh, clearly, as I said in the second slide, we need uh, many reads. We don't need uh, long reads, much long reads. We need many reads. So around uh, one year ago, with... Uh, for basis with Valentina Favalli that is here, we decided to uh, reduce the library size, so, so to sequence uh, uh, reads in the order of uh, 600, 700 base pair in order to increase the total number of reads generated during a, a sequencing run. And uh, thanks to this approach, we were capable to generate uh, in uh, just uh, after 24 hours from the beginning of the sequencing run around 50 millions of uh, uh, reads. So to push, to stress, to test our approach uh, with short reads, we sequencing in a single uh, prometheum flow cell 16 samples that included the seven samples that we uh, used in our previous work. And uh, we demonstrated th that with the data generated in the first hour, we are capable to identify uh, large aneuploidies. With the data generated in the first three hours, we are capable to identify micro duplications and micro deletions. With the data uh, generated in the first uh, 12 hours, we reached the resolution of an agile and cystic key array. And uh, with the data generating the first 24 hours, we are capable to uh, predict the level of mosaicism, even of uh, small CMVs, uh, reaching the resolution of an agile and 108 key uh, CGH array. So, to conclude, uh, we have developed a very rapid and straightforward experimental protocols with time to diagnosis uh, within uh, one, two days. An hybrid satility in handling uh, very few or many samples. I mean, it's nanoport sequencing. You can load 10 samples, uh, starting the sequencing, making the analysis, uh, finish the analysis, stop the sequencing, washing the flow cell, reload the flow cell with other 10 uh, uh, samples. So very easy. Uh, and uh, clearly, with very low per sample cost because in a single prometheum flow cell you can put between 30, 40 samples reaching the same resolution of an Agile and CGH array with 180 uh, key uh, oligonucleotide. 
So now we aim to test the system in a larger cohort, uh, starting from uh, DNA sample from the Collier repository, and uh, clearly to test our approach uh, in uh, clinical uh, diagnostic. Uh, finally, we have also developed a very nice tool uh, that is capable uh, to handle uh, the sequence run, run in real time, to make recount, uh, to segment the recount profiles, to identify copy number variants, predict their level uh, of mosaicism, uh, to uh, show the uh, copy number variants in a cardiogram, uh, and clearly to represent them comparing with a UCSC-like uh, panel, uh, and to compare with uh, DGV and other database uh, with uh, copy number variants uh, identifying other uh, studies. Thank you. Thank you.